All right, Wyatt, you ready? Sure, no. <laughs> I saved the hardest for you. Uh, well, I appreciate You're that. You're the most experienced. Yeah, I had to give you the. I had to give you the tough one. Not a pair of dirty underwear, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Fresh. <laughs> this round of Dorman mystery box has been. Man, it's a boat. Okay, so far doing really good. Another boat. Okay. A smaller boat. <laughs> and I fill the holes where the boats go through. There's a boat hole through. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of In the Isles presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. I am your unreliable host, Derek Beery from Bicycle Garage. I've got some of my favorite people on this earth here this time. I'm very excited for this. From the Restored channel and the Turn and Rust channel, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves because there's a lot of different roles going on here. We'll start with you, Wyatt. Okay. I'm Wyatt Bush, nice to meet you. I'm Christian. And I'm Lance, so dad, sister, and son <laughs> <laughs> it's fun watching this channel these guys work together great you've got basically two mechanics in a sense and you've got a videographer photographer uh are you still learning editing and doing all that yes, stuff sir. yep yeah. I, I got my hands kind of kind of in a little bit of everything nice so you've have you passed the torch officially oh yeah she I, i'll sit beside her and kind of watch but she's showing me a little bit of stuff on it now so. isn't that cumbersome when yeah <laughs> My boys are they're getting into this now too, where they're like, "Hey, check out these hot keys or this." Yeah. I'm like, who the what the when? <laughs> and they're doing all these moves on the keyboard. And I'm like, "Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. I'm sure." <laughs> yeah. But uh, Lance, when did you start? This start with turn and rust. Let's 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 roll the blinds way back. When did this start? That was your first YouTube channel. It's very successful. You've got almost six hundred thousand followers. How and when did that start? We started turning rust at around about 2017, I believe it was. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we kind of wanted to start a, an automotive channel that showed what me and dad were doing, which I don't know that we knew what we were doing at the time, <laughs> but still don't. Which was Craven Customs, essentially, yes, right? Yeah. But it's it's turning rust on YouTube. Right, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, our, our shop's named Craven Customs, and we were doing kind of paint and body insurance work at the time, but... Our town was so small, we were starving to death, so we found out we could flip cars on the side and make a little money, and yeah. we'd buy them cheap and do cheap stuff to them to make them look a little better and sell them. So we started the channel and was kind of showing that. we That's about the time I feel like Patina started showing its ugly face around, and we kind of liked it. So yeah. uh, that's hint the name Turn and Rust. We were... We were we were buying it, we were turning it, and we were also doing some rust paint jobs and stuff. So we were taking stuff and actually turning it into rust. So, but yeah, uh, we started out on that and uh, was putting content out. It's funny because we were putting a video out. I would say every three months back then, mm -hmm. and, and that was good for us. Yeah, we, yeah. You know, we thought we were yeah. doing really good, and I feel like YouTube's you know algorithm has totally changed. Like I feel like. You really can't do that now. It's kind of hard. You got to stay consistent with it. So, mm -hmm. but every three months we'd try to get something out. If we did, we did. If we didn't, we didn't. And uh, come around, we had a, a viral video come out for us though that really took us from, you know, kind of being not really known so well to getting on up there. Was so. this the Opal? Yeah, mm -hmm. the Opal. Yes, yes. Yep. I watched it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. Then you've got another successful channel, Restored, and that's almost to 500,000 subscribers, right? Yes, sir. Yep. And uh, kind of similar, but not quite. I mean, one's more restoration, one's more pulling them out of the bush. I mean, that's at least what I kind of see. And uh, that's one of the reasons I'm such a big fan is you guys take on stuff that <laughs> and film it. It's chainsaws and shovels and chains and just to get something out of the bush right. to even look at it and go, okay, here's a project where most of us just walk up and go, well, here's what I'm in for, myself included. You guys put some time into these things. I mean, it's a lot of work. Oh, that's just, I feel like buying them cheap, <laughs> that <laughs> comes with the territory. Yeah. So, you know, these vehicles are things that people are just, they want gone, you know, so... Yeah. Sometimes you get them for free. Sometimes a couple hundred, you know, scrap prices or whatever. Yeah. So 
But yeah, when we go out there, we're, you can't ever be prepared enough. You know, we spend half a day loading the truck up with everything we need, and then you get out there and oh, we forgot something that we sh was in the obvious, you know. But right, it's hard sometimes to know exactly what you're going to run into. Uh, she's seen her fair share of rats come out of stuff as her. <laughs> yeah. So last time I was at you guys' shop, you were talking about rats. We we opened a hood on something. I can't remember what it was. You could probably refresh me, but it was just grass and hay and seeds and walnuts and <laughs> and you're like, Yeah, I'm gonna get this rod up. Like what I don't even know what we're looking at. Is there a block in here? <laughs> yeah. What was that thing? Uh, I think it was an old American rambler. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Cause you had cleaned out the interior, I think. Yes, sir, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did we, you get it running? We did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's incredible. And I'm we really? actually went up and seen the car. She she fell in love with it. She said, mm -hmm. I want that car. So it was kind of a, a challenge for us to go ahead and get it running for her and that. So. Sure. Do you still have it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Are you driving it? No, not driving it. But <sighs> probably need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be more walking in it. It's got holes all on the floorboard, so I, I'd have to walk it. Well, license plates. Yeah. Yeah. Stop signs. Well, they don't have brakes, so the holes in the floor are kind of a perk to it. So. Now we're, we're talking the same language. I never got brakes. <laughs> yeah. Nothing I do. No, but that's that's one of the things I could say that, that just really is appealing for me as you guys are willing to go out and cut trees down and vine rows and all this stuff just to get the car where I think probably eight out of ten people would be like, that's cool, but no. <laughs> Done. And you kind of created a niche out of it. I mean, that's really what one of your channels is about, is just digging these things out and getting them on the trailer. And you get them back to the shop, and that's a victory. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to run. It doesn't have to roll. It doesn't have to do nothing. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So let's talk about some of your more, I guess, famous builds, if you were. You've got Herbie, mm -hmm. which is a really nice. Let's talk about that. Dig into that thing. This thing is I mean, it's restored, right, yeah. essentially. So tell us about her. Yeah, so it started out as a 68 Volkswagen Beetle. Um, we got it running, but it was kind of on its last leg type deal. And I wanted it to look like the movie car, which a 68 is none of the panels are correct. You know, the, the, the earlier car, I think it was a 63 Herbie was maybe. But it had the longer front end on mm -hmm. it, the bigger headlights and Teardrop stuff. Head, teardrop yeah. fenders. Yeah. yeah, just a lot cooler look. So um, we went ahead and changed all the body panels out on it, um, repainted the car, uh, went through the engine pretty much. Them Volkswagen engines, man, you can just – you can buy <laughs> stuff cheap. You can rebuild them in a yeah. day, you know. It's, yeah. So uh, we went and put new jugs, new heads, all that mess on it, and lowered it, lowered it down, and – Kind of learned that. I've never never really messed with lowering a, a Beetle or anything, so I've got mm -hmm. to learn how that worked. But, yeah, it's a cool little car. Uh, got a neat, cool stance to it. And everybody can connect with, you know, stuff like that, movie cars. and It seems like Volkswagen is, is a really like a nucleus for car people. Like whether you're a hot rodder or a collector or a resto mod guy or a patina dude, Everyone kind of meets in the middle at Volkswagen and mm -hmm. says they're pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, I can own one, I could build one, whatever else. And it's a great segue because you guys do a lot of weird, not weird, I shouldn't say weird. Well, <laughs> to me, weird because yeah. I'm very Americana, right? <laughs> Ford, Mopar, Chevy, you know, all that stuff. But you're into these, like, like uh, I call them bread trucks. You probably mm -hmm. call them bread trucks or, or box trucks or something, uh, Vespas and. BMW, old BMWs, and is there a reason for that, or is it just something you guys are interested in? Or I think for me is they're just weird, and I like hunting them. You know, like yeah. they're they're not so easy just to find, like an old Mustang or a Camaro. So it's like yeah. to me, the hunt is fun to find them and stuff, and uh, and there's a pretty good market on some of that weird stuff. So that's always a part too, you know, if you can find something that right. you can make some little little money on and stuff. Yeah. But, I look at some of your Facebook listings and I'm like, golly, I've walked past three dozen yeah. of these things and never thought nothing about them. Now I'm like, I should probably buy this <laughs> thing. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, there's obviously a market for them. The last time I was at y'all's shop, we you guys were working on a, some sort of three-wheeled, was it a BMW? 
Ah, you're finding the points, I think. Oh, yeah, a little Azera. Azera, yeah. yeah. And I'm just looking at it going, that's a snowmobile. It's a snowmobile <laughs> engine with a what's a transaxle. But I, it was just, it was bewildering to me because it was like, it's cute, it's fun. Yeah. It seems simplistic, although you can't get parts. It right, seemed like, right. you know. But um, I was like, man, I'm, I might be missing out a little bit here because <laughs> it's always like V8, straight six, straight eight. And you guys are fighting through these, you know, niche kind of uh, automotives. And it looks pretty fun, actually. Yeah, it is. It's really fun. You, you learn while you, while you work on it. So yeah. Do you have any history in that? or? Well, my dad was a mechanic. And uh, whenever I was, I was growing up, it was like, I don't ever want to do that. <laughs> Not me. Uh-uh. He probably told you how to do it, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd see him come home, and his hands would be bleeding and grease and oil and everything. I thought, that's not for me. Yeah. And I said, I'll never do that. So here <laughs> I am. Here you are. <laughs> yeah. I always tease my kids, too. Uh, often, they quote me now. I, I always tell them, I could have been an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what does that mean, Dad? And I was like, and I just turn it into, you know, Follow through with education and then really find what you want to do. And it's not that I'm unhappy doing what I do. I absolutely adore what I do. But in those moments of frustration when you bang a knuckle off of something, yeah. mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I could have <laughs> yeah. could have been sitting in a heated office right That's now. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But um, sometimes if you don't want to pass the torch, you just do it anyway. That's right. I've got 378 Go karts and golf carts <laughs> and dirt bikes and frames and tires and wheels and stuff. They're making deals behind my back. And I don't <laughs> even know about it. <laughs> he delivered it for 40 bucks. I'm like, who did what? <laughs> well, I, did you confirm with your mother? Well, uh, it's like, okay, this is getting a little out of hand. But <laughs> bloodlines are bloodlines, right? right. Yep. So that's just the way it goes. So, All right, let's talk about another very famous car you have i picked up a 35 34 35 Mm -hmm. ford truck from you guys i love the thing i adore it and uh thank you again for the hospitality i think that was this i don't know how many times i've been at yellow shop but you guys have been just great to me and i appreciate that and the whole time i'm filming this video in the comments it's truck's cool but what about ecto what's (laughs) this station wagon thing is it on bags? Is that a stack through the hood? What's on the roof? What is this abomination of a vehicle you call? What is it Ecto-1 or Ecto-2? We call it Ecto-Boost. Ecto-Boost. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So what is it? So it's a 63 Cadillac Hearse. And uh, when we bought it, it was just a roller. No, no motor, no transmission in it. And we put a 12-valve Cummins diesel in it. So... Uh, we decided we'd build it for the Lone Star Throwdowns, a showdown around uh, Conroe and mm-hmm. or whatever. And uh, so we did all that. We did it pretty quick. Like, we were pretty crunched on time. We'd put the 12-valve in it, which was a learning experience in itself. You know, we set it in there within, like, a couple days. And, oh, this will work great. But then the steering wasn't working. So we had to yeah. pull it back out and reconfigure everything. But yeah, it's got full air ride, and then we just took junk around the shop and made props, you know, functional props on the roof. It's got a flamethrower, it's got fog machines, it's got a zapper, a slime, I mean, a little bit of everything. That <laughs> That's awesome. So we were down there, and you're like, we had to move it for something. I can't remember what it was. But you're like, man, I, this hasn't run in a month or two, or maybe it was longer than that. We'll see if it starts. And you hit a button or a key or rub forks together or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And that thing lit off like now. And I yeah. was like, wow, that's I don't know if impressive. You, I don't know if you remember, though, but it had been there long enough rats had chewed the airline. And I remember, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The front didn't air up or whatever. Yeah. 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 I was like, okay, well, that's. So, uh, unfortunately, when you find them rats, I guess you bring some back with you, too. So. <laughs> yeah. So, th- that was a question that I had and you kind of already covered it, but on the roof rack, cause I'm always enamored with that. Like you go to uh, Disney world or whatever, and they ha- kind of have those. And I was at a car show on our, uh, a, uh, what are they called? Auto museum on route 66. And they had one of the original Ectos mm-hmm. in there. And I'm looking at all the, the gear on the roof and I'm trying to identify what all these parts and pieces in. So you said fog machine, mm-hmm. Uh, bug zapper 
Yeah, it's yeah. got some kind of electric sapper, which is, it's called like an electronic firecracker. I took a heat lamp shield, a center cap to a wheel, uh, um, end of a, a uh, kill pop, <laughs> and just a little <laughs> bit of everything and made this looking little cone looking thing that zaps in the middle. And then the flamethrower, we were playing around with it trying to figure out how to make a propane flamethrower out of what I found on Marketplace. It was an old, uh, very old projector, like a film projector. But I was like, it just looks like a gun, you know? Yeah. So I bought it for like 30 bucks from some kid and we took the guts out and put an air valve and probably can't explain exactly how we did it <laughs> on air, but it took a lot of trial and error. It shoots fire, yeah, is what you're it saying. Shoots fire. Yeah, Yeah. That's really cool. And you guys use it for local parades and obviously it's it's a well known it's almost like a uh, a statue of the, the city. Yeah. Right. Or town I should say. Well let's talk about that. So they live in let me let me try it. B Bogota? Oh you gotcha. <laughs> that was a lot of pressure. <laughs> so I've been grilled for this because I used to say Bogota, I believe, or something like that. And there was a, a, a Texan feller that was commenting on our videos, said, you gotta teach them how to say it right. So uh, <laughs> that's how you say it. They're from a very small town. And uh, you guys have stuff for sale. You could check out your Facebook page, right? You got, yeah. yeah. So you can find them there. But um, so you're in this small town. How do you find, you seem to always have an iron in the fire. Is it, do you have, people looking for you or is it just basic internet searches or face space or how are you finding all this stuff especially like the bmw and the bread trucks and because mm -hmm. that's like a small group of vehicles yeah lance is the person on that he's always on the on the hunt for something weird. I, I think i'm addicted to marketplace <laughs> i'm actually taking a break <laughs> from it right now so uh, i'm always on marketplace looking and it's kind of strange though i guess when you start collecting that stuff and people see it and they know you have yeah. it they're like hey i know where one of those is you know let me give sure. you his number and so it just starts you get some inquiries yeah, and, yeah. it starts kind of coming in a little easier and people are saying hey i you know i've got this i've got that or whatever so um, it comes a little easier when you start. I had never seen a metro van um, in my life until about probably seven years ago when we bought our first one, and now we we've got a ton of them. You You're know. like the metro van guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. What what scary movie was it they had that metro van in? Uh, it was so, some sort of slasher movie like ten years ago? Yeah. So a lot of people say that Jeepers Creepers is probably along the lines, Maybe but it's actually it. a cab over truck. Is oh, what that okay. is. Yeah, so it's, it's like just a, the front that kind yeah. of tricks them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But that truck had like a box on the back of it, so it made it look kind of like a like yeah. a panel van. Sure. Are you still working full time? I retired, supposedly retired last <laughs> August. Well, congratulations. But uh, I'm still working. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they still won't let me go. It's just so. for free. Why it's just for free now. Yeah. 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 So what do you think about all this mess? You got, obviously, your family is successful in this. You're... You're watching your kids grow. I mean, they've got successful businesses. There's all the millions of people watching. What does that feel like as a father? Uh, it's uh, it's really really makes you proud. I mean, it's just uh, it's something like when Lance first told me, he said, uh, "We're gonna try to do YouTube." I'm like, "Do what?" He said, "Yeah, we're gonna do YouTube." I said, "We're gonna starve to death. We were starving already, but <laughs> you know, we was, but yeah, it, uh, just to have have the fans come in. I think that's my main thing is when the fans come in." And they want to visit with you, and they tell their stories, and want to hear your stories. Now, uh, to me, that's the best part of this all. So, I agree 100. percent And you guys really did start um, back when it was like cute cat videos, and mm -hmm. you know, people laying their hair on fire and stuff. That was YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And you guys are making these full cinematic movies essentially on YouTube. It was just, it was really cool what you guys did. I credit you guys a lot in the car culture and restoration and revival and rebuilding. I mean, you're in that pyramid of greats, in my opinion. So Thank hats you. off to you guys. And Oh, we appreciate and it. I, and we, I, we definitely look up to you, too. Yes. So. No, no, no. No, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Do you still have the Tri-5 we worked on? I don't, no. Long uh, gone? I think it went to Tennessee, though. So Did you it? Might find it again. <laughs> Ears just perked up a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Now, I, was, I liked that car. It was just a little too rusty yeah. for, for my liking. Because not that I couldn't fix it, just the time, you know, to right. put a pan in and rockers and, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. But we plan to bring the 35 Ford back. We might go Ford powered. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Go back Ford powered and um, put a Ford 9 inch in it, I think. I got one laying out there and try to just do like a um, 70s kind of jean build. Mm -hmm. on, you know, yeah. Stacks, chrome stuff like that yeah i thought it'd be a lot of fun so do you guys have any big plans let's talk well let's back up and talk about i think your current plans are we were chatting earlier i just dwelled into the delorean life <laughs> um i don't know when that was i'm trying to forget about it <laughs> six months ago something like that you guys are new to the club oh yeah welcome how's it going? <laughs> it's not going well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My dream car is slowly becoming my nightmare car. Was that your yeah. dream car? It was, yeah. yeah. I guess. I, I mean, there's a lot of cars growing up that I really like to have, but I'm just a huge Back to the Future fan. I mean, I don't know how many times I've watched that. The going doors. Yeah. You had this, like, indication or feeling that they were, like, sporty and quick and, like, yeah. that, you know, someone's successful, that's <laughs> the car of the head. Then you yeah. buy one and you go, what did I do? <laughs> A Geo Metro has more options. <laughs> yeah. One thing that I will say about, C like, actually, because, you know, I've never really been around one a whole lot, but they are very low profile and wide. Like, when you're actually around them, it's like, mm -hmm. I, that's different than what I thought it was, yeah. you know? Yeah, they're, I, I think they're probably three or four inches, like you say, wider than yeah. a typical car. And they're definitely, I'm 6'3", and I have to slouch to, well, you're tall, too. You're probably my same height. You kind of got to slouch under the steering wheel to mm -hmm. to clear or sit when you shut the door. Yeah. Otherwise, you're in trouble. But is yours an auto or a manual? or It's a manual. It's a manual? manual? Yeah. So you're in the valley of death. You're attempting an engine rebuild, which is, I called it a toilet flapper engine. I don't <laughs> know what that thing is. Volvo, Renault, Pernod, yep. mm. something, Saab thing. Yeah. <laughs> some other. You're actually trying to rebuild this thing, is that right? Uh, hoping to. Hoping to. <laughs> <laughs> Hope's about it, I think, though. It's probably more hopeless. <laughs> Are you confident? Uh, I don't know. I like to. I like to think that it can happen. I don't know. I like to try to be optimistic about it. Yeah. So this was her on the car, though. We're we're scheduling to film with this car, and I bought the fuel pump the fuel stuff i'm like this is all we're going to need to get this car running yeah. you know and, and she'll like, spark the basics yeah and she's yeah. like you know we'll, we'll have this this video filmed in three days and it'll be up and running mm -hmm. be an easy one i'm like i don't know and then we just dug in deeper and deeper i mean we're down to just a bare block that cranks out of it the liners are out of it i mean it's just it's there's four holes in the valley that you can stick your finger through so oh. yeah it's it's bad uh <laughs> What's cool about those cars, they're kind of like the Bricklands, though. They're so eclectic. What's fun about them is knowing, well, for example, you guys have the engine out. You got a tore down. It's probably a bare block at this point. Mm -hmm. There, You can count on two hands the amount of people that do that in a year on mm -hmm. those cars, right? So you're kind of in like a very cool, like, proving grounds of this is rare. It's not often. I'm doing something uncommon, and you can help people mm -hmm. uh, by showing this is what you need to buy, this is where you can get it, this is how you can rebuild it. Yeah, I'm not trying to add pressure. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you don't do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it runs again, yeah. then you have kind of the roadmap to, you know, don't be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. You can do this. You can yeah. make it happen. And if it don't run, it was junk anyway. So. <laughs> well, there's, there's never the wrong way. There's always a learning way. So, right, yeah. hey, if this didn't work, don't do what we did right yeah. which is my motto <laughs> yeah. never do what i do but <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool and i wish you guys all the best um i wish i had a ton of parts laying around but i was so over that build i think we just put everything into a huge dumpster and gave it away <laughs> at the end other than the wheels i think i have a wheel for like an end table or something yeah <laughs> at some point but um it's going to be really do you have plans with it what are you going to do with it so ours is painted like yours was 
And, you know, supposedly the story we got is it was a dealer option. We haven't went over it close enough to see is there body damage somewhere. But it looks to be a pretty straight car. Um, I had planned on stripping it down to stainless, but a lot of people, because it does have a cool patina to it. It's red and primer showing yeah. through it. So it would be very unique to just leave it, but I, I don't know. I mean, we want to get the car up and going. Now that the motor's out, you know, everybody's, you, you can do engine swaps. A 12-valve won't fit. I've measured all that and tried to figure <laughs> you out. You mentioned this, and I was like, if you, you'll be a hero if you 12 valve that. Yeah, thing. I mean, that the car would be so Frankenstein to make it work. Yeah. It, I mean, you'd, you'd probably have to have it, you know, like between. Oh, you'd be leaning on a cylinder. <laughs> yeah. Shifting, for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. But, so if that's a factory maroon it's ultra rare. I'm sure you've already been told this and had the comments and um, you're probably in touch with, I think it's Mike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would know more than I would, but um, we were excited that ours is one of the ultra rare, ours was just rolled or something or mm -hmm. plowed through a fence and a, <laughs> some sort of drive through or something, but it was a wreck and they just quick tried yeah. to, hey, surprise, we painted it maroon. It's a super <laughs> ultra rare color but it was pretty much trashed so yeah. okay so if you get yours running i'm gonna throw this out there just for fun <clears throat> assuming you have the factory engine and transmission similar-ish tire specs mm -hmm. i think we should do a drag race <laughs> ls six speed versus factory modern technology versus stock let's just see where Let's see who can at 88 first. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun with it. You guys in? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yep. Sweet. And yeah, we're always up to be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the driver. Last time I tried to do any sort of racing, I threw several rods through the block. Uh oh. <laughs> There's always that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I've got to ask you a question. Normally I do this a lot sooner. You guys shop at O'Reilly's ish? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite aisle? Putting you on the spot. Uh, my favorite aisle would probably be... The one you walk in and you're like, I, I'm i going right here, right or left turn, boom, here, this is where I'm at. I mean, it's, it's, it's probably hard to not say just the performance stuff, you know, there. That's a common one. Yeah. <laughs> Christian, I mean, I, what, what about you, Christian? Hmm. I don't know. I was going to say paint. <laughs> yeah, probably so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably be the paint. Your aisle? All of them. All of them? Yeah, That's yeah. A I'm a guy. I just Can go down the restroom. <laughs> 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 restroom. Got a restroom on? <laughs> uh, battery aisle. I walk straight and just keep going straight all the way to the batteries because I never got a battery. And then uh, I'm always in the oils. It seems yeah. like oils, uh, bearing grease, rear end fluid, all that stuff. Funnels. I can't keep a funnel for nothing. They show up, they disappear. I don't know what happens to them. Yeah. But I okay. do like moseying through the help stuff just to see what's in there sometimes, just to, you know. The Dorman help section? Yeah. 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 Man, I fixed, uh, we fixed my duster door handle with one of those. I got a glass thing for my square body truck. They got tailgate straps. They got uh, spindle. I mean, everything you could probably about mm -hmm. imagine is on that damn yeah. wall in there. Mm -hmm. It's pretty impressive, actually. I wish I had that help, yeah, help, help yeah. section mm -hmm. in my shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd probably be standing in front of that thing <laughs> all the time. Now, speaking of Dorman, we have a very fun segment <laughs> called the Dorman Mystery Box. This is really fun. We're going to have a super professional crafted Dorman box, which is something Sandin's gonna carve out of a box here in a second. I'm gonna put a part in it. So I'm gonna hand you this box to each of you. And there's gonna be a part in it and you have to guess just by touching it and moving it. You can shake it, you can squeeze it, whatever you want. I'll know what it is, you won't, you have to guess. And then I'm gonna do the same. I have to do three, cause you guys are gonna do three. And we're gonna have a bunch of fun here. I don't know what they are. They're in boxes over here. They haven't told me anything about it. Those are big boxes, usually. <laughs> it's like a water pump or something already, I can already tell. But anyway, let's try this out. Let's load this box up, see if we can have some fun. Okay, so here's what we got. We got a little mystery box here. I 
obviously can't see, but I can reach. We've got Wyatt, Christian, and Lance, all with a part from Dorman. They're going to determine who's going first. I'm going to look away. They're going to put that part in here. All I can do is feel it, squeeze it, shake it. I don't think I can bite it. <laughs> Probably. Wish I could. But anyway, I'm going to have to try to determine what this part is, or at least give my best guess. And I think I have to do three of them. And then they all get a shot. So I'm going to turn around. You guys determine amongst yourselves who's going first. Throw the part in there. Make sure it's out of the box and out of the plastic. And I'll give her a shake. Any luck, it's a Ford or GM part, but probably not. All right, you, you got this. Okay. Lance is confident. Can I commence? Do we have a big timer or anything? Cool or fog machines? No. <laughs> All right. Nope. I don't got it. <laughs> I, I don't got this at all. <laughs> we got four fandanglies hanging off of a thingy. I can see the problem is I can't feel with my left hand really, so I don't. It's a weird casting. Well, I don't want to break the table. It's probably pot metal. That's probably a vacuum fitting. Five sixteenths. Probably similar. That one's a little bit bigger. Hmm. This is interesting. <laughs> Doodabber, thingy, I don't know. Kind of reminds me of a clock, but not quite. But there's no plugs. This is very, it feels JDM-ish. Like the, the way that it's cast. It's kind of honeycomb. You agree? Sure. You're cheating? <laughs> You're cheating? You said yes, okay. I have no idea. There's a pluggy thingy. You can't, maybe it is an IAC temp? Is it an IAC? No. No? How many guesses do I get? We don't, we're making up the rules. <laughs> we go. Okay, I'm gonna go with Vacuum Duheimer to four-cylinder Japanese car. <laughs> oh, what have we got? What is this? According to this, it's 904495 fuel drain valve. Fuel. <laughs> Electronic spiders, all I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even seen the sorts. How does this work? I have no idea what this is, too. If you own one of these vehicles, don't worry, Dharma's got you, I guess. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Next, I'm ready. Christian, you got an easier one? I hope. <laughs> like a like a thermostat gasket or something. <laughs> okay. Uh, throw it in there. This is how you really like gut check mechanics is doing this. Because then you're like, okay, I really don't know much of anything. Okay, we're good. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Why? You're supposed to take it easy on me. I know. <laughs> we got inlet and an outlet. I feel like it's fuel related. But there's no, I can't feel a connector for like power, so I don't know if it's a fuel pump. Is this a DeLorean part? <laughs> <laughs> then no one knows. This might be mounting holes, not... Fuel pressure regulator. No? What is it? It is a transmission line bypass valve. <sighs> I don't know why you're getting all the easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> what in the devil? Oh, so there must be a spring and like a piston in here or something, or like a shuttle or something. I don't even know what this is too. Have you ever seen that? No. <laughs> Chad, your Christmas card level just went way <laughs> down. Okay, last one. I don't know what to do with it. Oh. <laughs> Bypass the <a> transmission line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just, we're just gonna loop them. Forget that thing. I hear plastic, but it's got a rubber seal of some kind. This. 
great. It's sad I'm laughing. Yep. That's ready. <laughs> usually a good start. Okay. I'm going to start by saying nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a real part. <laughs> Did it no, come out of that box? Me, it came out of the box, so. I don't, I don't understand. Heater door regulator. Close. Really? Yeah. It's an emission solenoid. Give me 20%. <laughs> well, yeah, it's vacuum. It's got a little plug. That was tough. It felt weird. I thought it might be the, the damper door thing. All right. My turn? Okay, who wants to go first? Okay. Okay. Plants. Don't be putting the same ones in there that you did. <laughs> <laughs> I hear bubble wrap. Doesn't even make sense. Okay, buddy. Ready? Yep. It's all yours. <sighs> Let me say this is a very common part. <laughs> Not for anything we work on. <laughs> yeah. all, all I'm thinking about is like the old Chevrolet tailgates, the little hinge. That <laughs> sticks out on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, it don't spin. I can't get it to do anything. Oh, wait, wait. It's funner oh. on this side <laughs> than that side. There you go. You're on to something. And then that. So what opens and closes like that? It's kind of like a PCV valve in a way, but... Oh, yeah, I know that's not what it is, but I'm just saying how it works. That's, I'm, I'm looking at it, couldn't tell you what it is, so. <laughs> it, I, it's oily. It's got a little bit of oil on it. I can tell that. Uh, Best guess. I don't know. No guess? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. It is a VVT solenoid. I don't know what it does. But this is what it looks like. Hmm. <laughs> it looks like a thermostat now that I can lay my eyes on it. I, yeah, some sort of doodabber that clicks with things. I'm not even sure. Hmm. It's got some sort of gasket. Yeah. Yeah, looking at it, it's like a thermostat, but I did not see that in my yes. imagination. Yeah. yeah. No, touching this, that's a tough one. It's really tough. Okay, Christian. You ready? Ah, uh, as ready as I'll ever be. You watch these guys wrench. Our, well, you wrench too, so you know yeah, what? A little bit. This is a good one for you. <laughs> there you go. Fire away. Gosh. It's a modernized version of something you've seen a lot of times. If the radio don't work, if the heater don't work, if the cigarette lighter don't work. I'm trying to think. This feels like it's something you slot, you could slide something kind of deal. So is it the thing that kind of holds all the special things, holds the radio <laughs> in? I mean, I don't know. She got it right on that. I'm going to say you're close. <laughs> the thing that slides the thing. Yeah, and it holds close. something and does something for the car. Okay, so... Where, what's the central location if like your dash lights don't work, your tail lights don't work, your cigarette lighter doesn't work, where do you go to troubleshoot that area? Oh gosh. And it does not feel like anything like on a Volkswagen or, mm -hmm. or something old. It'd normally be glassy or metally. Oh gosh. I don't know. Best guess. This is the best part. Best guess in five seconds. Four. Three. I don't know. Something for the dashboard. Dashboard. <laughs> You're close. You're so close. That is a... Uh, fuse block module. Oh, see, I got it. <laughs> Very close. Very close. I kept thinking, she's fixing to say it's the battery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So in the olden days, this would be a bunch of glass fuses or gotcha. something like that. But I apparently you just plug this thing in. No, I don't. I don't know what this is too. A key or something. 
Not quite sure. 601-700. Dorman's got it. <laughs> Whatever it is. All right, Wyatt, you ready? Sure. No. <laughs> I saved the hardest for you. Oh, well, I appreciate You're that. You're the most experienced. So yeah. I had to give you the I had to give you the tough one. It's not a pair of dirty underwear, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Fresh. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Got some heft. Actually I'll let you see that part because I I don't even know what that means. <laughs> We used to use that in the candy machines to get free candy. <laughs> this is this is tough. This round of Dorman mystery box has been, whew, man. You got hardware with yours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a boat. Okay. So far, <laughs> doing really good. <laughs> Another boat. Okay. A smaller boat. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> and I fill the holes where the boats go through. It's so, tough. To yeah. oh, it's a boat <laughs> The thing with ball holes with the boats. <laughs> well, this, if it was like, if I, where I, when I worked at the city, this would be sitting on a shelf somewhere or behind the shelf. With dust on it. With dust on it. Yeah. Yeah, because. In a box with four <laughs> people's writing, one would be crossed out, yep. then there'd yeah. be the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's this, no, it's this, it's this. I have no idea. Give her a whirl, you gotta guess. Anything you can think of. Where's the Do we have to keep stuff? this PG? <laughs> <laughs> you can say whatever you want. I'm trying to, just... I'm, I'm reading it, I'm trying to comprehend what I'm looking at here. It doesn't have anything. It's just metal, and it's got a hole in it for that to go through, and it's weird shaped. What would you use it for? Paperweight. <laughs> <laughs> Here in the paperweight <laughs> aisle, <Yeah>. aisle six. <laughs> okay. It just feels like it might go on like something with the brakes or something. But. Brakes is that's a good guess because the the jog or the yeah, um, the sharp edge. Okay, this is actually a manifold clamp kit. To what? I have absolutely zero <laughs> idea. Not a clue. But it does come with hardware. Right, yeah, yeah. That, that's worth that, yeah, because you can use that for something else. <laughs> that's five bucks right there. <laughs> yeah. We cross thread this one, then you got another one for reference. Right, yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to a segment called Help Me Understand, which is where fans email in questions or statements to these guys here and try to help them understand what to do with their project or where they're at or what to do next. And we've got quite a few here. We're gonna to try to do a couple. Some of these are pretty detailed and pretty awesome actually. The first one is Hugh P. And I can already see some pictures of a Mustang. I'll show you guys just so you can see. I don't know if he did a color change or if that's a before and after. Mm -hmm. He just finished his 67 Mustang after advice that I gave him with Steve Dulcich. Thanks for the help. My question is for Lance would be in family. Uh, how do we try to keep the younger generation involved and interested? And how do we ensure this part of American history can continue and not be extinct, ex ex extinct ish? Thanks, and hope to hear from you soon. So basically, how do we keep the younger generation involved? What are your thoughts on this? Obviously, it's a beautiful car. Um, what do you guys think about that? I, you just had a baby. Yeah. So this hits home for you, probably. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's one of those things that I, I want him to be able to to take on in his own interest, but I'm definitely going to. Uh, he's going to be around it, you know, for sure. sure so. Yeah. I feel like just being open to... Um, I mean, every generation's a little bit different, you know, and so we can't really be just so set in stone of this is the way cars are supposed to be, or, you know, this is the way, you know, because it's, it, you know, I look around like I never was quite into this type of stuff, you know, but there's a lot of guys that are. And so sure. for me, it's just to be, be more broad, be more open to, you know, what they think is cool is yep. maybe cool, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Just have an open mind. I mean, that's, I, I think I know where you're going with that, and I'm the same way. 
I will never push the kids on anything, but just giving them the opportunity and the tools. And if they step up, great. If they don't, I'll support them in anything they want to do, right? Right. Yeah. So I think a lot of parents might be looking for that key to success of like, how do I make sure they're a car guy or mm -hmm. girl, but you can't. Right. You really right. can't. You just have to give them that opportunity and maybe they will, maybe they won't. One of my three boys wasn't a car dude younger. Now he's really starting. He came up at breakfast. He was eating his raisin bran. Dad, yeah, when are you going to put an 871 on something? Mm -hmm. And I was like, <coughs> what? Excuse me? Like, you know, because I didn't know he knew what that was. And how did he learn what that was? And he was randomly thinking about it, right? Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So it's like. Okay, and that's not my car guy. He's more of a electronic guy. He likes making chip boards and things work and more of a, I call him engine nerds because I'm jealous, but engineer <laughs> yep. than, than anything. So I think a lot about, you know, having patience with them and, yeah. and allowing them to, because I was went out of high school, I thought I was going to work on computers. Like, that's what I thought I was going to go to college for. Yeah. And, and somehow I transitioned to mess, try out cars and, and now I hate computers, you know. <laughs> and yeah. so, but. Blessed I had a, computers. Yeah. We just need a car about everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I had a great ag teacher, though, that was, man, he was there to help help me out and, you know, show me the way and stuff. So Very cool. Very cool. This one's really neat. This is from David R. And uh, it's about a trike. It's a VW powered trike. You guys have experience with VW. Mm -hmm. There was a gentleman, I can't remember his name. I went to high school with his daughter. He built VW trikes in South Dakota. They're very handcrafted. He only did a couple a year. And this looks very familiar, but the name doesn't ring a bell. It says, I just bought an Ed Roth trike, complete with his business cards glass into the body. And of course, it's a VW power with an automatic. I found reverse, neutral, and drive with a makeshift cable shifter. But sure, there is more than one forward gear. Any tips on how to find more forward gears? So it sounds like a transmission issue. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, how many gears do they have? Two, three? Three. Three. Or four? Uh, four. Yeah. Up to that four, yeah. Yeah, and reverse is like a weird push down, pull over, come yeah. back. You know, it's not. It's hard to see, but it's probably a standard beetle kind of. Transaxle. Type yeah. Thing. Yeah. Just kind of transplanted yeah. in. So it might be a linkage issue or something. He said he only had one forward gear? Or? Yeah, he said he's got reverse, neutral, and drive. Mm. So it's not like a dirt bike where it's like one down, right. two mm -hmm. up. So it's park, neutral, drive. So maybe it doesn't reach back far enough. I guess I don't know which way is shifting. Right, or yeah, that's what I was wondering, how the shifter's done in it. So They kind of they kind of twist. Like, it's got that rod that kind of twists on a Volkswagen. Right. Are there bushings back. or anything? Yeah, yeah. there is. There's yeah. bushings? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So maybe look at bushings. Yeah. Is there anything we could hook a vice grip on and just manually test it? Anything like that? Um... I'm just picturing yeah. him have like a crazy shifter on the gas <laughs> tank or something, yeah. you know. Yeah, I would think if I mean if it's like a Volkswagen transaxle, he he should have I mean you should be able to tell too, how's that first gear like Right. Yeah, how's it sound when you're okay. taking off. But. So maybe put it on jack stands, check some bushings, crank yeah, on things. And the bushings are a bad problem on those okay. things too, so all right, David, I hope that's helpful. <laughs> just go through the basics, look at your bushings. Sounds like there's some levers and whatnot in there. If all else fails, get the tiny harden out. Just hit her with a hammer. You know what I mean? That might help. Okay, let's see if we can find another one here. Here's a great one because I think a lot of people are stuck in this phase. They dream big, which is great. They find a vehicle, which is awesome. They save it. They get it back to the shop. They're doing everything right. They strip the thing down, and then two years later they're going, now what? Mm -hmm. What do I do with this thing? It's taking up space. It's taking up money. I'm trying to pay a mortgage. I got to build a deck. I got a boat mortgage or whatever it might be, right? right? So we've got, and that might not be the case for Mike G, but 
he messaged in and said he's got a 78k10 short bed he finished coating the frame which means he's he's way in it <laughs> yeah right he finished coating the frame with rust and cap capsulator and then painted it what should i do next to get this going again brake lines fuel lines etc question mark so it sounds like he's all the way to the frame cab bed everything is off of this what would you guys recommend he's painted the thing it's sitting there i'm assuming it's probably on rollers or something right what would you guys do at that point usually when we get to that point we set it to the side and start on another one <laughs> <laughs> well we'll run next yeah, easier yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so uh I would think if he's not already to this point, you know, be sure that all your, your you know, front end parts, your steering suspension, or your steering parts That's are a really good. good point. Uh, I guess because everything I've got, they're bad in, you know, yeah. so just, uh, but he may have, if he's past that point, yeah, he's, he sounds like he's on the right track of brake lines, fuel lines, probably new fuel tank. Uh, yeah. You know, those old things are, they're going to be rusted up. So uh, bushings, a lot of people kind of don't think about that when they're putting them old truck. Because them, them things sometimes are, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know. they're sitting like yeah. a banana. And you paint them beautiful, and all of a sudden the box and the cab are like this. And you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, no, that's a good point. That's something that even I overlook often, accidentally or maybe intentionally. <laughs> Not really sure, but it's like tie rods and ball mm. joints, drag links and... You look at them and go, eh, I'll oh, just put some more grease in it. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're sanding and painting this and replacing this and new shock. and But then you drive the thing and you're unhappy because it's, it's all over the road. And you, can't, you can't control the thing. So I would agree. I think before you even start with brake and fuel lines and stuff like that is, you know, look at your wheel bearings and wheel seals and steering components. Yep. And is the gearbox centered correctly? And is the alignment right? And and uh, rear axle bearings and things like that. Because he's obviously in it, in it. Right, right. yeah. So. I was starting to say that we don't get that far into him usually. <laughs> yeah. So it's, if, it's, if we happen to get that far into it, it's over our head. We don't want to have to mess with it. So. <laughs> yeah. Usually, if I end up with a bare frame, I do. <laughs> it's going to go to the trees pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to bring yeah. something else in. And Somebody later will be digging it out of the trees for us. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Give us some a little bit of an insight, maybe a teaser for your followers and your new followers that are going to check you guys out at Restored and Turn and Rust. Where are you guys headed? You got some big irons in the fire. What does 2024 look like? What are you guys up to, or what are your plans? If you could share anything. Yeah, absolutely. We want to. <laughs> It looks like a bomb went off at the shop right now with that DeLorean, so we've got to make some headway on it, especially since we've been challenged to this drag race now. But we want to get the DeLorean back up and running, but we've got a 1960 Lincoln Continental camper car that we're putting a 12-valve in. So. I think I almost bought that thing. Actually. Yeah, you'd ask about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. So we're going to put that in it, do full air ride. The inside of it's just been rained in for 15, 20 years. So everything's going to You're going to fix the camper side? Yeah. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, Very we're going to cool. try to. He's he he's likes doing the carpentry stuff, so I'm going to lean on him, you know. Are we talking tile, fake wood, marble? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just anything I can piece together and break the tape boxes, together, cleaner whatever. boxes, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. duct cool. tape. So that's your next kind of big project. Yeah, something to look for yeah, I think that's going to be our next kind of what we build, I guess you'd say, on that. And is there anything else that we're kind of working on? That's we've got the Cadillac. We got oh, going. yeah, yeah. We do have a pretty cool Cadillac <laughs> up in your neck of the woods. We got yeah? to pick up. So it's got. Pretty phenomenal story with it. So. Y'all want to swing by with it and do some work or something? You let me know. Or you, you might have to take you up. On yeah, that. come <laughs> over. We got room board, kind of junky tools, some electricity. You can use whatever you want. Sure. That's a fire alley. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode of In the Isles, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Thanks to the guys and gals from Restored and Turn and Rust. These guys are awesome. Be sure to check them out. They're always up to something fun, quirky, unique, or just absolutely awesome. Thank you guys, and we'll see you very soon.